traders. <clears throat> Excuse me. All right, traders. This is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. Hope everybody's having a great trading session and happy Monday. Happy Martin Luther King Day. Um, so we are going to go through all of our majors as we uh, normally do. So let's just uh, let's get that done. And um, you, you know, one of the things uh, you know, we were talking about the euro dollar a little earlier. The euro dollar is kind of stuck in the crossfire, if you will. Um, you know, I. Uh, looking at the euro, I, I still think that the euro dollar is bearish as long as we stay below 110.50. Now, if you look at the daily chart, okay, the daily chart could be viewed a couple of different ways. And um, so uh, I, I want you to look at it like, well, first of all, we have this major down sloping trend line, that yellow trend line. And you can see actually it, it intersects more like around 110 right now. And as long as we stay below this yellow trend line, it's bearish. Okay, as as long as we stay below that um, that yellow trend line. Now, it, it, that, that you know that that's a lot of room. I mean, we're at 108, 109 right now. Um, you know, we could rally back to 110, but as long as we're staying below there, um, you know, I'm personally, um, I I can't I can't be on the you know I can't be on the long side or be bullish more than, you know, more than intraday. Uh, but again, there, there's a couple ways you can look at this chart. And I think, let me grab a different color pen here. Um, you know, we still have the flag pattern too. So, uh, and, and this is, I'm free handing this, so just bear with me because I'm just going to delete it after I'm done. But, you, you know, we still have this flag pattern that is theoretically still in play. All right. And, and by the way, this flag pattern points to like 80 cents. Okay, it's it, it's 80 something, or uh, I forget what the actual target is. But regardless, w what we're doing is we we're, we've turned this flag into more of like a you know now it's a pennant, you know, which gives us the same result. It, it, it doesn't really matter, you know, how you look at it. It still gives you you know a, eventually a, a bearish breakdown, and you know you'll still look at it from you know the the, the pole that you see here. Okay. So like I said, whether you're still looking at it as a flag or you're looking at it as more of a, you know, more of a bearish pennant, uh, it doesn't matter. You know, the, the, the bottom line is key support comes in at 105 and, uh, or 104 and change. And then resistance is at 110 and we're closer to 110 than we are to 105. So that, that means that if we do rally in the Euro dollar, you know, if we do see, um, you know, the Euro rally back, then, it's eventually going to be sold. And what would it, it just just to, to ask you guys, what would get the euro dollar, you know, back up towards 110? Because I can tell you what what I think would do it is if the market continues to be risk averse, you know, the dollar will come under pressure, and we'll see the uh, we'll see the euro back up here at 110 or 110. Excuse me. You know, if if the market then you know we we the market bounces. What we've seen is we've seen the dollar strengthen when the market bounces. You know there's a there's a um, um you know different dynamic that the dollar has and you know versus you know several years ago where the dollar would rally as the market was risk averse. You know on like safe haven flows. Um, you know the big story of the market has been. And 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 I'm I'm still skeptical to know or to believe how much order flow is still left in in the market um, for this. But you know, as the market sells off, the euro squeezes because the euro is a carry currency. But I don't know how much carry you know flow there has been or how much is left because it, it's not like we're awash in 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 massive carry uh, in a massive carry trade environment. And have been even as stocks have been going up because, you know, central banks, their 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 rates aren't too far not far off from each other, um, and that's why you're seeing the euro squeeze higher against the emerging market currencies because it, the 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 real carry trade that's been out there has been sell euros, buy rubles, buy pesos, buy uh, you know. Um, Rand by you know some of the central banks that some of the central banks that have those the emerging markets that have the higher rates, but the 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 fact of the matter is is that a lot you're not going to get a massive amount of flows by doing that, and the reason why 
the reason why you're not going to is because the you know a, a, a lot of institutions aren't going to be buying those types of carry trades because of the you know um, because they don't want currencies of emerging market currencies. If it was a G10 currency, it'd be a little bit different. That's why I'm a little skeptical about the amount of flows that are left. So as the stock market goes down, does the euro continue to does the euro continue to go up or does the dollar continue to go, go down? I, I don't I don't know how long that's going to last, but we but it's obvious right now that that's what we're getting. So we have to go with it until things change. Um, so right now, uh, again, a rally, you know, towards resistance. Uh, you can see how we, we we kind of push right up here to 107 or 109.70, 109.80. Um, you can see that support probably come in right through here. I, I would I would venture to guess. Okay, let's go over to the hourly chart. Let's kind of see where we're at. So if we continue to stabilize here, um, let me, I'm going to grab this trend line here. Oops, I don't want to do that. <laughs> Keep grabbing the whole thing, and I don't want to do that. Okay, here we go. So um, you know, this looks doable at this point, like a move down to 108.50. You know, maybe down to that spike low right there and I and I'd venture to guess that that's near a 78 percent retracement of this move pretty damn close right right here 108.66 so 108.60 so that's gonna offer us some support today and it's probably gonna be pretty good support because if you're like if, if you feel that if, if you feel the market's going to be risk averse, like today's just kind of a pause between like a resumption of what we saw last week, which I, like I said, I think that's a, I, I said that, that earlier when Paul was here, you know, I think that's a big risk. You know, I think a big risk is we're just stabilizing right now, but we're going to wake up tomorrow morning and, you know, um, risk aversion is going to be, you know, a lot stronger. If that's the case and you believe that to be the case, you, you might want to be looking to buy the euro when it gets down to here. I mean, because this, this is, you know, from a risk reward perspective, this is, uh, you know, uh, you can, you know, buy the euro here, put your stops below 108.50 or 108.40. You only risk, you know, 20, 20 or 30 pips, you know, for a move back up to 109.50 or even higher. All right. So that that's that that to me is, in my opinion. A potential trade today if you guys are looking for stuff to do today um, you know and and then I believe that that you know obviously this resistance up here is going to be key on the way back up so uh, 109.50 you can you can really just mark it up at like 109.65 109.70 okay if we make it all the way up there but that, that's pretty far away We're still in a range environment, but like I said, this this right here is probably not a bad idea for today. If you can dip down to 10860, you know, maybe 20, 25 pips away from where we're currently at. If we can dip down there, you just get long and put a pretty tight stop, okay? Because you, you, it's you, everything that we do, regardless if you're right or wrong, because we're when you trade, you know, you take positions in the market. If you think you're going to be uh, you know, getting every trade right. Um, you know, think again, because that's just not how trading works. But the 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 thing that we can control, because we can't control our gains and losses, but we can control our risk. So, um, to a certain extent, obviously, you can't account for gaps. <laughs> you know, like you know, like you buy it here, and the next thing you know, the ECB does like launches another round of quantitative easing while you're in a trade uh, then the euro is trading down at 107.50 before you can you know before you get stopped out that's obviously can happen but most you know 99% of the time you can control your risk to a, to a, to a good degree so you know if we're down here at the at the 10860 level and you get long you put in a 30 pip stop you know that is your risk you know it's a decent risk considering what the reward could be. You know, if you bought a 108.60 and you're just looking for a bounce back to 109.50, you know, you're risking 30 pips to make 90 pips. 
it's a it's a it's a good risk reward. And like I said, I I think that's a decent trade setup for today. Um, and then obviously, if you break below like 108.50 and you get a nice solid break below there, then you know that opens the door for a move back down to like 107.50, um, you know, or maybe 107 over the course of the next couple of days. All right, just some food for thought of things to do today, you know, while the market is fairly slow. Uh, okay, so here's the cable. Now, the pound. You have to go all the way back to. 2010 here, okay. Okay, 2010 um, support being 142.26. Okay, we went as low as 142.50, right? 142.47. I mean, huge support down here. Uh, it looks vulnerable, if you ask me. It really does. Um, but you know, we are paused off of there for right now. There's okay. So there's, in in my opinion, there's a few things that need to be that need to happen here for the cable. You know, the cable is, uh, as Paul pointed out, it, as well as it, it is really trading heavy. Okay. In order to take the downside pressure off, we have to get above this 143.50 just for today. So it's bearish while we're below that. Okay, 143.50. Hold on, I'm going to come back to that. 142.25, roughly. Okay, that is key support. We are bearish. Okay, so. But to take the downside pressure off, not only do you have to get above this 143.50. It, more importantly, I think is you got to get above this trend line here, which this will be the big Kahuna. So if you're if you're if you're trying to play you know counter trend on the cable right now, if you're trying to play counter trend on the on the cable, really you're you're not out of the woods till you get above here. You know whatever you know by the time we get up there, you know where is it? Who knows? But 143.50 and maybe 144.50 by the time we get up there. Okay, but 143.50, this one, this number here for today, that's going to be a big deal. You know, um, that's going to be a big deal as far as uh, resistance goes, in my opinion. All right, let's go take a look at the Swissy. Now, I played the Swissy on the long side on Friday. I ended up getting out with a, um, a just a break even. I uh, I bought it like around here. It it dipped. Um, I, don't know, I bought it right like around. Here, I'm trying to think where I where I bought it on Friday. I bought a little here. Maybe I bought a little bit down here when it was dropping. It actually stopped at the 618, bounced back on Friday, and then I was I had to go run an errand, and I actually did it as soon as I stepped in front of the back in front of the computer. I got out basically for a break even, um, but we we ended up pausing right here at the 618, and I and I did it. I got out of it more to just reduce exposure over the weekend. You know, versus um, here, let, me, let me grab this really quick. Okay, but that, in my opinion, is going to be really critical support. And you can see this resistance is holding here, right? So resistance is holding up here, support down here. So any move down to uh, 109, 60. I, I think I'm going to try to take advantage of it the next time we get down here. So if we get down here again. Like let's say over the next 24 hours, I'm going to try to take advantage of that if we do. Okay, so 109, uh, 109.65. Okay, you can see even the spike low down here is 109, or uh, 109. I keep saying that 99. Sorry, it's 99.60, 99.60, 99.65. That's going to be really key support. So I'm going to go support point 99.60. Okay, resistance. I think that resistance is going to be good for th for today. Now, I'm not a big advocate of shorting the Swissy. You guys know that, and the reason why I'm not a big advocate of shorting the Swiss franc is because the Swiss National Bank has, you know, their rate at negative three quarter basis points. So I'd rather buy uh, short Swiss francs on dips, short Swiss francs on rallies buy Swiss pairs on dips. Try to get that all out 
the same way. So in other words, I'd rather be a buyer than shorting it. I don't like being on the short side of these Swiss pairs. Okay, I just don't. Um, so anyway, the resistance here is going to be at 1.007, whatever, 2. Okay, so I'll just write that down. 1.0070 is resistance, and we're in a range. All right. Okay. Let's take a look at. Let's get situated here. Let's go to the dollar yen. So I pointed this out earlier, and I know there's there's you know a few of you guys and gals are coming in a little bit late. Um, or weren't around earlier when I was talking about it. One of the things that sticks out to me overnight is, um, and, and you can see this, the dollar yen, you know, triple top, neckline, break, extension, complete, we're there, bounce, right? We're, we're really, the dollar yen, believe it or not, is very, um, has been technically very well behaved. I mean, look. I mean, look at look, this chart speaks for itself. One, two, triple top, maybe quadruple top, really, right? Low, 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 low. That's a range. Breakdown, boom. Range extension, right? Range extension. Perfect range. I know we've had our charts drawn for a long time, but the you know, perfect range extension hits a low there. Hits another low. Okay, so you can you can do copy paste. You know. We had another low right here. Perfect. All right, now we're bouncing. But the the standout, the reason why I think this is such an important chart that we're looking at is because if you look at the equity markets where here's the E-mini futures, okay, let's go over to a an hourly, okay, you'll notice the E-mini futures we hit a new trend low, and the dollar yen, I mean, the dollar yen, I, I guess, arguably did by, what, 10 pips? But the S&P, you know, if, and let me undo that really quick. You can see how the S&P make up made a, a a a pretty big new low, you know, pretty powerful new low, and then dollar yen didn't. Okay, so that divergence is, in my opinion, very important. Dan Dan writes in so <laughs> that still cracks me up. That still crack it still cracks me up. Like that that day that day I sent out a tweet and Ransquak retweeted it. It said that if the dollar yen, or when the when the S and P falls, the yen tends to strengthen, and that there was a parallel chart. And I'm like, keep an eye on this. And then, of course, you know, after following the days after the dollar yen fell, you know, 500 pips, and the, the S and P fell like five percent. But some dude responded to me. He's like, so what is that supposed to mean? <laughs> it's like, well, <laughs> well, dude, I'm telling you that if one happens, the other thing's going to happen too. So if you're watching, you're getting so uh, still cracks me up still to this day. Anyway, okay. But what I'm showing you here is the S and P didn't hit. The S and P was really hitting new lows. The dollar yen wasn't. So what does that mean? Well, that means is if if the dollar if uh, if the stock market bounces and we we get risk appetite improving even more between today and tomorrow. Okay, if that continues to happen, the dollar yen may bounce, and it may, you know, it may bounce strongly. All right, what I notice right now, and this is this is probably pretty pretty key for tonight. Uh, I, I know it's early today, but I'm already talking about tonight. I understand that, but I think this is pretty important here. Okay, see this? Venture to guess is about a 50% retracement, right? Pretty damn close. Okay. And you can even go, well, maybe it's from the high. All right, it is 50% retracement from the high. Okay. We're knocking our head up against what I think is decent resistance. We can, if we can get above 
117.50, that's going to be a good indication that risk appetite is continuing to improve. Now, if that's the case, okay, hold on, let me write this down, 117.50. And by the way, we are bearish. It's just, you know, we look like we're going to bounce near term. You know, it looks like we're going to bounce near term, but it's still, it's still, you know, got this big head and shoulder pattern. You can see it. Shoulder, head, shoulder. I think we're on the neckline right now. We might flutter around here for a little bit before actually having the next breakdown. But here's the thing. Um, if we can get above 117.50, I mean, you got it. for those of you guys that can trade like the the peso, maybe you start buying a little bit of pesos. Um, you know, for those of you that can trade the South African rand, maybe you start buying a little rand. You know, if you can trade the ruble, maybe you might short a little dollar ruble. You know, and buy a little ruble. Um, you know, you can also sell some yen, buy dollars. You know, or maybe buy some Aussie yen or New Zealand yen. There's a few things that I think we could do. Um, if, if risk appetite continues to improve. Now, do, do I think we're going very far? No, I, I would be surprised, frankly. I'd be surprised if we bounce and, here, let me remove some of this stuff. Okay, I'd be very, I'd be very surprised if we bounce and we took out these highs here. Like I could see us bouncing a little bit in the dollar yen, maybe bouncing back to 118. And then, you know, tomorrow's turnaround Tuesday, you know, risk appetite's improving tonight, tomorrow, and then, you know, tomorrow afternoon, we just start slumping again. I think that's possible. Um, but, um, you know, I, I still think that, that if we continue to, to claw our way back, that, that we're, you know, making some, some decent improvements here, okay? in risk appetite. So support you know, for the dollar yen for today looks to be right here. Right? I mean we'll mark down the overnight lows but which will be right here at 117 but 117 looks to be decent support. You know if, if you want to for today you know, if you can dip back down to 117, maybe buying it down here. That, that I think that's, you know, not a bad. Then you can always get long at 117 and put your stops below 116.50. You know, but uh, 117 should offer support. All right, let's um, let's take. Uh, I'm I'm doing this slow and I'm taking our time because it's pretty slow out there. Uh, let's talk about the Canadian really quick. Okay, so the dollar Canadian, um, my high is above 146. That's where my stops are at too. Well, they're higher than where they're at here, but I'm not going to put my stops right at 146. That's silly. Um, but I guess pre-market, uh, from what I'm hearing, pre-market, we traded you know up like 146.50 and stuff like that. Glad we didn't open up there because I would have been stopped out. Anyway, um, uh, but I, I, I look just to double check. I, I went over to Trading View, okay, and see what you know they they, they marked up here at you know via FXCM and the same thing. You know the high here is at 146. I bet if you go to a different data feed, you might see something a little different. That's 146 here. Uh, that's not it. Not the fixing rate. Um, but Anyway, I heard pre-market we were trading a little higher, okay? But what I did notice with the dollar Canadian is this, okay? And let me get rid of some of these that are, this is because this is all relevant now, all right? We are trading around 145. We're off 100 pips from the highs, and, and you know, um, we have the A, B, C equals C, D, by the way. This is the same as this, right? A, B equals A, B equals C, D. A little overshoot, which, you know, makes sense. Um, if there's a, if if you have pre-market activity trading up to 146, and this is a bit of a shooting star, regardless, it's a pretty
pretty big red candle. So if if we if we um, if we pull back here, okay, if we pull back here, uh, we should find support near. And I'm going to show you the the the, the uh, channel that we have again. Channel looks something like this, right? So we should have some support as we drop down towards 144. 144 is going to be big support. Okay. Um, so and and actually the low from Friday, which comes in at 144.20, is probably going to be more specific support. Okay. So 144.20. All right, I think that's going to be 144. Pretty key support. And then resistance now is at 146. And um, it's still in a very bullish trend. You know, like I said, I'm trading counter trend, which, you know, I'm just taking small positions. I did add to it. A little bit on Friday, uh, my cost average is at 143.51 right now, and um, I don't know if I'm going to add any more. I'd rather start looking at other Canadian pairs to take advantage of, like you know, maybe shorting the Aussie Canadian, New Zealand Canadian, things like that. Euro Canadian, uh, I stepped in front of a little bit on Friday, which you know I'm up 35 pips right now, which is you know it's not not a lot, but you know that's that's you know, that's as far as my exposure goes. I don't want to. I don't want to get too aggressive with the Canadian just yet because I'm not really 100% convinced that, that that crude oil is ready to turn. Okay. So anyway, um, okay. So here's your bias chart. We're gonna come, when we come back, we're gonna do the Aussie Kiwi Dollar Index. We're gonna look at you know some of the exotic currencies, um, and uh, we'll look at the Nordic currencies as well. So. Don't go anywhere. I'll be back in a few moments, and uh, happy Martin Luther King Day for you. Be right back. All right, traders, this is Blake Morrow. You are listening to the Morning Edge webinar. I'm going to welcome you all back. Um, so let's continue on with the Kiwi and the Aussie, um, both of which that are, um, well, the, the, the Australian dollar is a bit up a little bit better than the, uh, the Kiwi dollar. Now, also keep in mind that we do have China GDP uh, later tonight. So that will be uh, that and industrial production, fixed asset investment, um, you know, we have a press conference out of China. So that's all coming out this evening, uh, later tonight. It will be a market mover, especially if you're, if you're, you know, trading Australian dollars, um, if you're trading, you know, Kiwi dollars, if you're trading risk appetite, um, you know, so tonight's data is going to be pretty important. From what I'm looking at on CNBC, I just glanced up, it looked like all the European markets have, uh, have slipped into uh, negative territory. For the day, uh, we'll go. We'll look at those a little bit later, obviously. Um, but let's get into the Aussie. Uh, so the Aussie dollar. Uh, the thing that worries me the most about the Aussie is that we closed in breakdown territory. This is concerning. All right. You'll notice that on Friday, and let's uh, actually let's delete these fibs here really quick. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of that. I can I can put all those back up. Friday, we closed in breakdown territory. Okay, that to me was pretty concerning. Now we are bouncing this morning. You know, we're we're bouncing a little bit, but you'll notice that this whole this zone we had this drawn out as a zone from you remember all the last two weeks this whole you know yellow thing. Okay, that zone is uh, you know, just as much as it was support on the way down because remember we we we've had it down here for a while. You know, since we were about like right. Here, I said, "Oh, this is going to be a big zone, buy zone, right? Support. We hit it, came close again, stopped again, and then finally broke through it. Now we can't get back above it. So what that means is this resistance here is very important for tonight. Okay, right here. That's 6925, 27, uh, 6927. So 69, basically." 20, 
five ish is going to be huge resistance on the way back up. Now, the good news is, is if we have like some favorable Chinese data, like let's say the Chinese data is not that bad um, tonight, we, we might take that out. And if we take that out, we should have improved risk aversion for the next you know couple of days. So. Um, you know, we might get a bounce back. I mean, we'll get, you'll start looking, people start looking at this as a false breakdown in the Aussie, you know, all sorts of things. But that means we have to get through Chinese data tonight, which <laughs> doesn't, it's, <laughs> it's going to be a tough obstacle because as you guys know, the data has not been really good. So 69 and a quarter, it's going to be really big resistance. We are in a bearish trend now. Okay. okay. Um, and then support will be the lows from Friday, which will be 68.26, which is 68 and a quarter. All right, let's take a look at um, the Kiwi. So here's the Kiwi dollar. And the Kiwi, we held this support, uh, well, I mean, I say we held it, but, you know, the Kiwi's not in breakdown territory yet. I mean, we haven't gotten down to the 62, you know, 62, you know, 61 cent range yet. Uh, we're still, you know, trying to hold above this 64 and a quarter that we'd been writing down. We spiked below that on Friday, pop back up. Um, we're still holding above it right now, and so I would I would say whatever the low is here from Friday, which is 6380, it's pretty important support. Okay. Pretty important support there. Resistance. Um, let's go over to the hourly here. Gap down, filled the gap perfectly, and we are having a hard time getting above that gap fill. And that comes in at 64.78, which is 64.80. So I think like China, you know, like the Aussie dollar, uh, you know, same, very similar. You know, if the Aussie dollar can get above uh, 69.25, uh, you know, that we wrote down, 69.25, uh, and you know, the key we can get above 64.80, that'd be pretty pretty bullish for the for the currency pair. 64.80, okay. And right now we're still in a bigger range. All right, it's not bearish like the Aussie that's breaking down. The, the, the Kiwi is actually still pretty much range bound at the moment. All right, let's take a look at the dollar index. Here's the dollar index, and um, still confined by this triangle. Remember, we wrote this down on Friday, and we popped below the lower end of the triangle briefly, and then right back up. So you can see the the dollar is very well confined here. Um, I'm my, I guess my assumption is we're going to continue to hold this, right? All right, so. 98.20 or uh, 99.20, 98 98.50, 98 98.50, 98.50, 99.20. We are in a range, and you can see it's just very, very well confined. We had we had drawn out this triangle for the last probably since like last Wednesday or Thursday, and that has really held us held us very well. Okay, so until this uh, until we can break, you know, whether it's higher, we break higher, then we're going to be challenging th those levels. We break lower, we're going to be challenging those levels. But until that happens, you know, just got to be really careful as far as looking at the dollar for you know for any anything other than 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 you know, just the trading inside of these ranges. All right, let's go take a look at the peso. So the peso spiked 
uh, on Friday. You know, market was risk averse. We went flying to 1832. It's a nice flag pattern. And by the way, this is a oh, this is the wedge break target hit. Okay, now. Yeah, because we're in uncharted territory. By the way, uh, the U.S. dollar Mexican peso, if you did not know this, it's hitting historic lows, like historic lows, like the peso has never been cheaper type of thing, all right? So you can see we're flag patterning, flag patterning here, which means that the next extension could take us to 1860. Market gets a little risk averse, and we're going to be right back up here. So... Resistance is 1832, support is 1815, and it's bullish. Eighteen fifteen, eighteen three two, and it is bullish. All right. Um, let's take a look at the, that was the peso, let's go over to the Norwegian Krona. Now, um, the Norwegian Krona is still very similar to, um, to, you know, well, it's, it, the US dollar Norwegian Krona has, it's, it's rallying back right now, and it rallied sharply in Asian trade because of, you know, uh, crude gap down to 28.30. Okay, and we pulled back, and now it's bouncing back a little bit. But crude's also pulling back, if you guys haven't noticed. Okay, so um, the U.S. dollar and Norwegian krona, it still has that divergence, though it really does. But you can see here, this 890 is probably going to be a pretty big deal, maybe 891. Um, but we're still diverging. Like I said, you know, crude oils, crude oil continues to hit new lows like it did last night, and the Norwegian krona isn't above nine. So it's still divergent. Okay, it's still divergent. Now it's it's looking fairly well bid right now, but um and, and I and I do have a short position in the US dollar Norwegian krona. Um and it's small. I do I don't but I don't mind. I'm just playing the divergence right now. Uh and I don't want to add because I'm really not 100% sure about crude oil. Well, no, you're never 100% sure of anything, but I'm, I'm, I'm not very confident in crude's ability to turn around yet. Okay. Um, 891 and 875. So, and it's still bullish. 8. 75, eight, oops, 8.91 is resistance. It's still bullish here. Let's take a look at the Swedish Krona. Still inside of these ranges. Not not a lot. There, there's just not a lot to do with the US dollar Swedish Krona at this point. Okay. Um, Let's take a look at um, really quick USD or some of the other ones. South African Rand. Let's take a look at that. You see the Rand is. Yeah, I mean it was rallying on Friday because the market was risk averse and it came down uh, overnight. And now it's just been kind of slide, sliding higher. Um, Take a look at the Turkish lira. Just kind of sitting there. Uh, the ruble. Oh yeah, we're at uh, new all-time lows in the uh, ruble, I believe. High here was 79.51. The high today. It's 79.18. We're almost hit. We are, we're almost at new all-time lows in the ruble. Crazy, huh? Yeah. 
like I said, uh, th this will turn. This will turn lower if stocks bounce. But it, but you, you, what you might notice here is the um, the E mini futures. I mean, we're selling off. Here's the futures. Here's your hourly. I mean, you know, since I've been sitting here, we've been pulling back. I mean, it's not very aggressive, but you know, you can see we're pulling back, and as we pull back, that that USD RUB is uh, is rallying. You know. Okay. Um. So here's your bias chart for today. I think it's pretty much done. You guys can go ahead and take a picture of that or whatever you want to do. Uh, let me go ahead and answer some questions really quick. Give me a second.